In this video, we're gonna take an existing game maker game and make it a mobile game by working on the resolution and the aspect ratio so it adapts to any phone and also by adding a virtual joystick for touch controls. I'll then show you how to test your game on mobile and how I was able to build it for both Android and iOS which are part of the free version of game maker. If you only want to see that part then you can jump to this timestamp. We are starting with the arcade shooter game as a base, so if you haven't followed that yet, you can watch it from the description. Then we're gonna use the RPG project to test phone rotation and how that affects the resolution. And you can find a link to the RPG tutorials from the description. I've got the arcade shooter project loaded up here, but I'm changing the sprites so it looks like this now. I was able to get these from the prefab library over here, which you can use if you're using GameMaker 2024.13 or a newer version. This has sprites that you can use with your objects. But if you're on an older version, you can download this pack from the Asset Bundles page on the GameMaker website. The link will be in the description. For these new sprites to fit, I had to make the room bigger and move some things around. And with some other changes like adjusting sprite angles, masks, speed variables and adding a background, it's looking good now and we can now turn it into a mobile game. Right now you can see the game has a square aspect ratio. So let's go into the room and with the room asset selected, go into the inspector and change the room dimensions to 1080 by 1920. This should work well for most phones as a standard. Later in the video, we're gonna make the game adapt to the resolution of the phone. But in most cases, you can keep it fixed like this and it's gonna work fine. So if you run the game now, it will appear with that new resolution on your computer. And now we're gonna test it on an actual phone. From the target menu up here, select the GX Games target. Then run your game. It should open in your browser. You're gonna see the scroll bar here, so you can scroll down, find the buttons that you see here and click on the show QR code button, the one on the left. This shows you a QR code that you can scan from your phone. And if your computer and your phone are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, you should be able to test the game on your phone. It looks good and it looks like a mobile game, but you can't actually control the ship yet. You can shoot by tapping because we made it so you click your mouse to shoot but it's the same mouse functions that also take touch input. So that already kind of makes it easier for us. For multi-touch, you can use the device mouse functions and just pass in the touch number you want. There's a tutorial on this that I'll link in the description. So we are now gonna add a virtual joystick that you can use to control the ship and it will keep shooting while the joystick is being held. Let's make a new object and call this OBJ joystick. I'm gonna open the room and create a new UI layer so I can put this object there. I'll drag it from the assets list and put this in the UI layer over here. This makes two things easier for us. We can take input on screen space with the mouse X and mouse Y variables and we can draw things directly to the screen with the draw event. So all of this is independent of cameras if you're using cameras in your game. Now if you are on an older version that doesn't have UI layers, just go ahead and put this in a normal instance layer and I'll tell you how you can adjust your code so it works in the version that you're using if you're not able to update to the latest version. Let's go into the object and add a create event. Here we're gonna make some variables. This is the position of the joystick on the screen. So when you place your finger somewhere on the screen, the joystick will move there. Then this is how much you've moved the joystick after you've placed it somewhere. So this is the actual movement that applies to your character. Then the using variable stores whether you're currently using the joystick or not, as in holding it down. And max radius is how far you can take the joystick from where you placed it, which is its center point. Let's add the begin step event now. We are using begin step so we can take input here and then other instances can read that input in the step event because that comes after begin step in a frame. Now let's check if a click or tap was found to place the joystick. I'm gonna use this function with the MB left constant since that works for a normal tap. In that case, we set the joystick position to the mouse position this is gonna be on the UI layer. However, if you're using an older version than 2024.14, then you will need to use the device mouse X and Y to GUI functions here with zero as the argument. Then we reset the movement to zero because we have just placed the joystick down and we set using to true. Now we wanna check if the finger was released. So we use the release function for that. 
In this case, we simply set using to false and reset the movement to zero because there is no input anymore. And now we're gonna take care of what happens every frame while we are holding the joystick down. First of all, we get the X movement by taking the current mouse position and subtracting the joystick's position out of it. This tells us how much we have moved the finger since we placed the joystick down. And then we do the same for the Y movement by just using the Y variables. Now again, if you're using a version older than 2024.14, then you need to replace the mouse X and Y variables with the device mouse X and Y to GUI functions. Now we want to limit the radius of the movement. So we check the distance of how far we have traveled on the joystick. If it's greater than the max radius, then we want to limit it to that radius. So we first get the direction of the joystick with the point direction function and the same values that we use to get the distance. Then we set the X movement to the X component of the vector we have constructed where the length is the max radius and the direction is the direction you're moving the joystick in. And then we set the Y movement to the Y component of the same vector by using the Y version of the length there function. This should work, but you're not gonna see anything. So let's draw circles to represent the joystick base and how much you've moved it. Go ahead and add the draw event to the object. This should draw to the screen space rather than the room space because the instance is on a UI layer. But if you're on an older version that doesn't have UI layers, then make sure to use the draw GUI event instead of the normal draw event. Now here, let's first check if we are not using the joystick and then exit the event so we don't draw anything in that case. Then let's set the alpha to 0.5 and draw the joystick base by drawing a circle with a radius of 100 and set the outline parameter to false. Then we set the alpha to 0.3 and draw the circle for the movement. This draws the joystick position with the movement added to it and uses a radius of 50. And at the end, we make sure to reset the alpha to 1. With this, if you run the game, you should be able to use the joystick and see it and it works perfectly on its own. Of course, it doesn't move the ship yet. So let's make the ship take input from the joystick and apply it to its movement. For this, we need to go back into the joystick object and in the create event, add a function that can be called by other objects to get the input values. We'll call this function get input and create a simple function. This function is gonna return a struct, which is a collection of variables. It's gonna have an X variable, which is the X movement divided by the maximum radius, and then a Y variable, which is the Y movement divided by the radius. This means that the X and Y movement values that you get from this function are gonna be between minus one and one. So they are normalized and can be used as a multiplier with say your speed value. So to do that, let's go into the player object over here, let's first add a create event and define some variables. This is the acceleration that happens every frame. And this variable stores how many frames it's been since we last shot a bullet. So we can keep track of that and shoot on a frequent basis. Then I'm gonna go into the step event, which already has code for movement and shooting using the keyboard. So I'm gonna remove all of it, but the only line I'm keeping is the wrapping code. So we never go out of the room. Now to take input from the joystick, let's add a condition that first checks if the joystick instance exists. And then we check if the joystick is being used. If both conditions are true, we can get our input. So let's make a local variable to store that and call the get input function from the joystick. This will give us that struct with the X and Y values, which are between minus one and one. Then I'll increase the horizontal speed of the ship. The value being added will be the X input multiplied by the acceleration value. Then let's increase the vertical speed with the Y input multiplied by the acceleration. So the joystick values will make the ship accelerate. Then let's set the image angle of the ship to the direction of the input. So it faces where the joystick is facing. And then for the shooting, let's check if shoot time is below zero, which means we can shoot now. So I'm gonna make a local variable to store the new bullet and I'll create it with the instance create layer function at the position of the ship and in the instances layer and the object is obj bullet. Then I'll set the image angle of the new bullet to the image angle of the ship so it matches. After shooting the bullet, I'll set the shoot time to 10. So it takes 10 more frames until we can shoot again. We want this variable to count down every step. 
So at the end of the event, outside of all conditions, let's check if the variable is at or above zero and then decrease its value by one. So at some point it will reach minus one and the condition we have up here will trigger. You can now run the game and test it on your phone as well and the input will work and the ship keeps shooting every 10 frames while you have the joystick held down. Now we're gonna see how we can make our game adapt to the resolution and aspect ratio of the device that you're playing on. For this I'm gonna use the RPG project as an example which I've already got set up with the virtual joystick that we just created and with that I can control the player. Right now the game starts in a horizontal aspect ratio and stays that way so we're gonna make it adapt to the window that it's in. For that let's make a new object and call this obj resolution. I'm gonna add the create event here and this is where we're gonna adjust the resolution. Let's first get the height of the camera in game as I'm gonna use this as the base height of the camera and we're gonna adjust the width based on the device. You can later adjust this code to do something else like changing the height instead of the width. Then let's define a function that we can call whenever we want to update the resolution to match the device. In the function I'm first gonna calculate the aspect ratio of the window that the game is open in. So I'll first get the width of the window and then its height and then I can calculate the aspect ratio by dividing the window width by the window height and I'm doing it this way because I'm using the height as the base and changing the width based on that. The first thing I'll do with this information is update the camera size. So let's calculate the width which will be the height of the camera we stored before multiplied by the new aspect ratio. That gives us the new width and the new height will be the same as the height before. We can then call the camera set view size function to change the size of the camera according to our new variables. But this only covers the in-game camera so we now need to adjust the output of the game. So first of all I'll set the size of the window which is needed for the GX games target in particular so the canvas actually changes its size. And then we change the size of the application surface which is the actual resolution of the game that is output to the screen. So this will become the same as the size of the window that it's being displayed in. The function is finished so let's call it at the end of the create event so it can do its thing once. I'll now go into the room and put an instance of this object here. You can also make this object persistent and just define it in your first room so it keeps existing throughout the game. Run the game on your phone now and you're gonna see it has adapted to the vertical resolution without us having to explicitly set it to that. And if you reload the game with the phone in landscape mode, then it will adapt to that. So it adapts to whatever size it finds when the game starts. So what I'm doing here is very specific to my game where I'm changing the camera width, but you can play around with this and try and change different values, maybe combinations of both the width and the height. And if you're not using a camera, you can play around with resizing your room or doing whatever you want your game to do on different devices. Now this example only adapts to the device when the game starts, but if you want the players to be able to rotate the phone and have the game adapt to that in real time, we can add some extra code for that. So first of all in the create event, let's create variables that store the width and height of the window. Then let's add the step event. Here I'm gonna check if either the current window width or the current window height is not the same as the ones stored in the variables which means that the size of the window has changed. So in that case we're gonna update the width and height variables with the latest values and then we call the update resolution function again so it adapts to the device. Now if you run the game and rotate the phone, it will adapt whenever the size changes. This also works on Android and iOS which we'll look at later in the video. Now it may be that you don't want the players to be able to rotate their phone and you want it to just stay in one orientation. So for that you can just go into the game options for your platform and change the orientations that are allowed from here. Now building for GX games is easy enough as I've just shown you and if you want to publish your game to the GX game store, you can go and watch the tutorial linked in the description. There's also an article on publishing mobile games to GX games which will also be linked in the description. Now for Android, there are guides that you can find on the Game Maker Bugs wiki. Now the first thing you wanna do is to find the required SDKs page for the Game Maker version that you're using. And from there you can find the setup guide for the platform you want to build for, like Android. This guide is going to take you through whatever you need to set up and build for Android. And I'll show you the basic flow I had to follow to build an Android game. 
So as per the guide, I downloaded Android Studio, installed it and set it up as per the required SDK versions listed on the setup page. Then I went into GameMaker, opened the preferences and under the Android preferences, I updated the locations of where the Android Studio, NDK and JDK are installed. So make sure you point them to the correct folders so GameMaker can find them. You can then set up the key store and all which is mentioned in the setup guide. After setting all this up, you can go into the target menu and select the Android option which will download the runner if you don't already have it. I connected my phone and enabled developer mode and then USB debugging as it says in the guide and tested the connection and it was working fine. You can now go ahead and read the rest of the guide which will tell you how to compile the game for Android. So I just ran the game with my phone connected via USB. I got a prompt for installation on the phone and once it was done I could play my game and all the touch controls and rotation support from before worked perfectly. Now for iOS as well there is a setup guide that is linked in the description but if you're on Windows you will need to follow the macOS guide first so you can connect your Windows PC to your Mac and then you do the iOS setup so your PC can send all the relevant info to the Mac and the Mac will then compile your game and run it on your iPhone which should be connected to the Mac. So just follow the guides linked in the description and you will be able to get the game running on iOS as well. You might need an Apple developer account to make this work so make sure you read the setup guide properly and also the Apple documentation in detail. These guides and building for Android and iOS are not something that I can show you in this video step by step because these instructions keep changing a lot so the video would be outdated very soon. So make sure you go and check these guides out if you want to build for any particular platform. And that's it for this video. Let me know if you want any other areas of mobile games covered or anything else in particular in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.